Yes, so uh, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm going to present today more specific validation results and give some uh, uh, insight into the monitoring that we are doing uh, routinely at UMEDSAT for the DRZ Level 2 product. Before I go on, I'll ask a little bit of your contribution just to make sure of who is here today and whether we have some participants that possibly didn't make it uh, yesterday. If you could just put across where you feel you, you are, that would give me a good indication of, uh, of the audience today. Okay, I think that gives a, a clear view of, uh, of the, the participation today. Thank you very much for that. I will stop the uh, annotating for now. And I see we have a, a, a quite a few uh, newcomers. So I have only two or three slides just to, to recall a, a little bit of a notion that will be useful for the, 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 the following. So YAZI is a hyperspectral sonder that flies on board a satellite called METOP and flies in low Earth orbit. Uh, YAZI, um, we are exploiting its measurements in synergy with two microwave uh, uh, instruments from MHS and uh, AMZU. And the synergy of the two uh, helps us making retrievals in most cloudy conditions. Uh, YAZI belongs to the hyperspectral infrared uh, Saunders uh, family and uh, is very sensitive to, to clouds and uh, in case of a fully overcast uh, uh, pixel then the atmospheric sounding is possible down to the cloud top level but not within uh, or below the, the cloud. This is where the microwave are extremely helpful and just wanted to, to recap uh, that and with the combination of the two we have a higher yield of temperature and humidity profiles. So uh, YAZI I just presented here is the uh, operational hyperspectral sonder that UMEDSAT is uh, operating. There are three uh, instruments in space. Uh, the three are still operational, uh, though the, the first one was launched uh, now 14 years ago. And uh, there is a follow-up, uh, the YAZI next generation that is foreseen due to, to uh, launch in uh, 2023 with improved uh, vertical sonding capabilities. Another future mission is a hyperspectral sonder from a geostationary orbit called MTG-IRS, MTG for Meteosat third generation, and IRS for infrared sonder. The big advantage of that is the, um, the, the repetition of the observations over Europe, where we will have every 30 minutes a sonding over, over Europe. With the YAZI and yazi -NG LEO counterparts, the coverage is only twice a day of a given place, so the MTGRS will be clearly more dedicated to uh, now casting uh, applications. The products that uh, you can already uh, start working with are the uh, YAZI uh, Level 2, so geophysical products uh, generated in the regional service EARS YAZI Level 2, uh, and that uh, uh, is uh, making, taking advantage of local receiving stations and here is the coverage of, uh, of this service. So with this service, we are able to provide to you, to the users, sounding of temperature and humidity within less than 30 minutes from sensing. That's why it's making it very timely for, for now casting purposes. So these products are uh, disseminated through UMEDCAST. They come in HDF5 uh, format that should be easy to, to use. Uh, the retrieval method is a statistical retrieval. I'm not explaining on that today. Uh, and we are exploiting the synergy microwave and infrared, therefore we have all sky sounding. The products, and Yana introduced it, and that's very important, are forecast free. There are no NWP forecasts in these retrievals. They are purely based on the observations. And with this, we include temperature profiles, humidity profiles, as well as the precipitable water vapor. Uh, we provide information about the surface temperature and emissivity some information about the cloud intensity within the pixel and the quality indicators. And today's talk is dedicated to the validation and uh, the performance assessment of temperature and humidity profiles, precipitable water vapor, and I'll elaborate a little bit about the cloud intensity and more specifically the quality indicator that you can use to make your own data selection. So YAZI is uh, providing, and these hyperspectral sonders are providing information in the vertical. This is humidity retrieved for one day at 200 hectopascal. 
now it's 500 hectopascal, and you see clearly that we have different structures in different layers. So we do have vertical information in these uh, in these uh, measurements, as well as a good total column water vapor information. I mentioned the cloud before. Uh, this is to give you a feeling of the typical useful yield if we were restricted to clear sky uh, pixels. Okay, and that's typically about. 15% of the of the cases, 10 to 15%. The advantage of the techniques, the retrieval techniques we're using, the statistical uh, retrieval, allows us to make retrievals in most cloudy situations, and this is the, the yield that we are getting. And of course, the utilization of the microwave make these retrievals uh, more uh, valuable and more uh, accurate. Okay. So to wrap up the content of these uh, products, we have vertical soundings on the 137 sigma levels, as uh, Yana introduced. Uh, we provide temperature profiles with a quality indicator that is actually an uncertainty estimate of the temperature in the bottom layers. Uh, similarly, we provide water vapor profiles that come along with a quality indicator, and the same is it's an uncertainty estimate uh, expressed in dew point temperature in the bottom layers. Together with this come a so-called OMC, OPS minus calc indicator, which gives you uh, an indication about the cloud uh, signal, the cloud intensity in that, uh, in that pixel. So in the next slide, I'm going to give you an overview of the many extensive validation uh, work that we have performed in-house, uh, but also through external collaborations. And you have seen an example of one with, uh, with Yana before. Um, and that involved comparison to uh, in-situ radio soundings, comparison to models, to ground-based measurements. So I'm listing here a few uh, reference documents that you can go to and a few papers, and uh, there are more on the way, and certainly more in, uh, in many conferences. That figure we have seen yesterday, and that's important to recall an important characteristic of the, of the profiles. In red, you have um, a radio sound, uh, sounding of humidity and temperature, where you can see uh, fine vertical scale uh, structures. In the two shades of blue, you see uh, the retrievals from method A and method B at the same place, and you see that we capture uh, the, the, the main features of the profile, so we do have information in the vertical, but we don't resolve this uh, fine scale structure. So that's something important to, to, to remind, but we do have a, a, a fair representation of the, of the situation. So what does it mean if we were Comparing um, uh, in situ measurements here illustrated with uh, actually a, a forecast profile where we see a low level inversion. If we were comparing that level to level uh, to, uh, to a retrieval, we would see larger errors. And Diana uh, explained that in a, in a half slide when she compared to the um, AMDA uh, data. So we need to bear in mind that these uh, types of inversions, uh, we won't be able to capture uh, in full details, but we see inflections. So the first question is, is can this be useful to the, to the users? And when we perform statistics, also the requirements were set on uh, one kilometer uh, layers, uh, which is uh, approximately the actual uh, resolution power of the instruments, okay? And so if we were considering the reference data uh, to compare to the, to the satellite sounding at big scale, then we would see uh, that the precision is there and we meet the, the requirements. So when I say we don't capture the inversions, we don't capture them fully, but there could be interesting information still in the profiles. That's kind of a busy uh, plot that also originates from uh, uh, the work at ARSO from Yana and Matea. And what you're seeing here is a uh, humidity and temperature profiles, let's start with the cyan, which is a forecast uh, from the Aladdin model at the time. And you have in green uh, in-situ measurements from an airplane. And you see that there is an inversion that the forecasts were not uh, capturing. The analysis in the, in the dark blue is seeing a little bit of an inversion, but not to that extent. The red lines are the uh, YAZI uh, retrievals. Of course, we don't capture the, the inversion it, it, in its full strength. Uh, because it's a very fine structure that is not accessible to the profiles. But still, still we see an, in, an inflection that we were not seeing in the, in, the, in the forecast. And so the question is whether this type of information, even though we don't capture the, the investment fully, can be useful to, to you. Yep. 
Okay, so now we will go into uh, the, 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 the meat of, uh, of the statistics. I'm starting here with comparison to, to forecast. This is not a validation, this is just to give some level of confidence uh, that we have a general grid, good agreement between numerical models and, uh, and, and the retrievals. And you're seeing here uh, the bias of the difference between uh, retrievals and NWP uh, ECMWS for the three satellites in space and the standard deviation. And you see that we are well, well below the 1K uh, requirements uh, for most of the troposphere, and we have larger uh, departures next to the surface. So this is for um, uh, maritime cases in the northern hemisphere. We, are, we have broke down the same analysis in many regional classes, and I will just go quickly uh, over it. So this is the same, these are the same statistics for the different regional classes, and you see that we are well below the 1 Kelvin uh, target for most of the uh, uh, troposphere. Over land, we tend to have larger departures next to the surface. Possibly we can share the, uh, the, the cost here between the, the, the forecast and the retrievals, but it's known that uh, instruments like YAZI uh, lose sensitivity and vertical resolution next to the surface. So it's um, to be expected that the, the, the precision is a bit uh, uh, lower uh, there. Okay? So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to skip over that one. Uh, I'm going to introduce now validation results uh, or comparison of the total column water vapor as retrieved from YAZI to ground-based GPS. And these instruments are extremely accurate, and they have also um, the advantage of making continuous measurements, therefore uh, providing um, um, very suitable uh, matchups with YAZI in terms of uh, time difference. And here is an excerpt from a work we did with uh, U.S. colleagues from the University of Wisconsin comparing the retrievals of total column to GPS in two, two armed stations, Darwin and uh, Lehman. And you see here the correlation plot. Here is a time series of the difference from 2007 to 2014, where we see a good stability over time. Some regional variation that is related to what Yana was introducing that the uh, uncertainties in absolute terms get larger when the atmosphere is moister, that's to be expected. So we will have larger differences in absolute terms uh, in, in summer times. And this is um, a plot of the uh, relative accuracy of uh, the YAZI A and YAZI B uh, retrievals versus the, uh, uh, the, the reference to GPS ground stations. So in terms of accuracy, we are well within the 5% target uh, for most of the uh, most range. And of course, when the atmosphere gets drier, the relative error is also larger. Okay, here is another example of such a comparison that we've been carrying out, this time using the whole SUMI net ground-based network and the whole year of 2017. So each of these uh, studies actually would be worth a, a presentation on their own. So these are just glimpses of these, which you can find the full detail of in the uh, validation reports or in the papers. Another way of uh, validating or assessing the, the products was to compare the uh, temperature profiles in the uh, upper uh, troposphere, lower stratosphere, against uh, satellite-based GPS radio occultation. Here is COSMIC. And this is a work that Michelle Feltz from the uh, University of Wisconsin carried out, and she's made a, a nice paper of it. And uh, what you're seeing here is the, um, the, um, the bias between uh, the, the radio occultation profiles of temperature and the so YAZI retrievals in black, and the air, which is uh, also uh, an infrared uh, sonder, but an American one, in, uh, in blue, and the standard deviation of, uh, of the two. We are pretty happy to see the accuracy of the retrievals uh, there. It's not that relevant for now casting, but it's interesting to see the precision uh, up there as well. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce the, the notion of the uh, quality indicators, which I uh, introduced before. So the quality indicator is actually an uncertainty estimate of the retrieved temperature in the bottom layers. What you're seeing on this map are uh, YAZI footprints, so these are the ellipses, and they are color-coded color uh, with the quality indicator for temperature, which is the uncertainty estimate. And below, this is an RGB of an imager uh, from uh, ADHR. And what's interesting is you see that even though the retrieval scheme doesn't know anything about the cloudiness, the uncertainty estimates actually correlate well with the, uh, with the, with the cloudiness, and we expect 
the most uh, precise and accurate retrievals in clear sky, which is the case here. So we are in the shade of blue, so sort of one Kelvin or below one Kelvin. And in the clouds, then we have larger errors of about 1.5 uh, Kelvin estimated. So to give qualitatively confidence in this uh, quality indicator that we are providing to the, to the users. What I want to introduce here also, because we will need that uh, concept for later, is the, the, the comparison to sounds. So this, this here is an arm site actually, and there was a sound release, and uh, the trajectory of the sound is illustrated uh, here. And this is to show that when we are making a comparison between a sound measurement and a satellite uh, a retrieval, we can be very distant in time first, but also in space. And actually, the sound as it's drifting is going to cross over different uh, pixels. So there is in the sound versus uh, satellite profiles assessment, uh, there is in this budget a lot of what we call the collocation uncertainties. And this is the notion I wanted to introduce here qualitatively. We will need that uh, uh, later. OK, let's move on. Now I'm jumping back to the uh, OPS minus calc, uh, which is the OMC, which is uh, an indicator of the, of the cloudiness. Uh, and I will not explain how it's retrieved. It's just bear it in mind that it, uh, it's related to the um, cloudiness within a, a pixel. So a high, thick, cold cloud will have a very strong signal and, uh, and a low partial uh, uh, coverage with a warm cloud will have a lesser uh, OMC uh, signal. So what is shown here is statistics of the retrievals of uh, YASI uh, temperature versus forecast. This is a work done by KFT Salonen, and I'm sure she would explain more on Thursday morning about that. And what we're showing is the uh, correlation um, between the difference or between the, um, uh, say, uh, YASI forecast agreement as a function of the OMC. So the uh, Differences between the satellite uh, temperature and the forecast are color coded in uh, here uh, with this color scale. And here on the x-axis, you have the OMC. And interestingly, when the OMC is close to zero, then this confirms that we also have the best quality. So that is um, an indicator you can also use uh, to discriminate the, the, the best retrievals. And that is available in the, in the product. OK? OK, I'm coming back to the previous notion. Sorry, I should have put the, uh, the, the slides in a different order. Uh, because now we are going to talk about uh, the um, results of comparing YASI retrievals versus SONS. And in this departure budget, we have many components. We have the satellite product errors, which is what we want to characterize and to uh, uh, compare against the uh, user requirements. This is the validation. The validation is assessing a performance and ensuring that it meets the, the requirements. And the, um, the product error will come from the smoothing error that we've discussed, the retrieval noise at, uh, that comes from the instrument and many other components. But in, in this satellite versus sound departure budget, we also have the collocation uncertainties, which I introduced before. They come from the fact that we have a difference in time, in space, and uh, also the representativeness of a single point measurement that is the sound versus a 12 to 40 kilometer uh, pixel of YASI. Is a, is, a, is a big contributor. And the third component is the in-situ measurement uncertainty themselves, uh, the, the sound or the AMDAR. Uh, they have their own uncertainty estimates. But when we, when we make um, um, bulk statistics, we actually uh, incorporate all those three components. So the results you're going to see now are indicative of the uh, quality of the products, but we shouldn't take the numbers as a direct measure of the satellite product errors because there are also uh, other components to it. OK, so let's jump into it. This is a result from, uh, from uh, American colleagues at, uh, at NOAA who are routinely monitoring a large number of uh, satellite uh, sounding products, not just uh, hyperspectral, but also microwave. And uh, they are comparing it uh, in a routine monitoring to a radio sounds. And the upper panel, you have the monitoring of temperature at 730 hectopascal of maritime uh, cases over time from 2008 to 2020. We will focus on the uh, gold and brown colors, which relates to the UMETSAT ESZ level 2 products from method A and method B, respectively. And in this time series, you see the evolution of the performances when we move to the version 4, to the version 5, and then to the version 6. 
where the UMEDSAT products became actually the, 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 the most precise uh, there. And uh, the green bar is actually showing you the 1K requirements that is in the, the user requirements for these, uh, for these products. In the lower panel, this is the same concept, but for humidity, about the same uh, level, 700 hectopascal of the maritime cases. And here again, this is when we introduced the version 6, which is currently operational. So when we introduced it back in uh, 2014, that we got the, the most uh, precise uh, uh, products. And here you see also a little seasonal uh, variation. This is what Yana and I just discussed uh, before. The absolute uh, uh, error will uh, vary with the, uh, with the actual moisture content. And so in, um, in winter time when the atmosphere is drier, then we tend to have a larger relative uh, uh, error, obviously. Okay, so now I'm going to show um, comparisons between sound and retrievals as performed in our routine monitoring in the in UMEDSAC. This map shows you the, um, the matchup points with the, the sound sites from the uh, IGRA uh, database. And the uh, matchup criteria are recalled here. So we're collocating sounds and uh, retrievals within the free house and below 50 kilometers uh, distance. This is an example of the month of 2020, August 2020, sorry. And in temperature here, you see the, the, the bias for two retrievals. Um, the statistical retrieval in blue is actually what goes in the uh, ESLZ level two. And uh, that is not present in the regional service. We also have a physical retrieval that adjusts a little further to uh, statistical retrievals. So we uh, reduce a little bit the bias that uh, actually uh, Jana uh, illustrated uh, before with that method. Uh, and in terms of precision, both uh, retrieval methods are, are relatively equal. So we have now a prototype development of a statistical retrieval that is reducing this bias and bringing it closer to, uh, to zero, actually. And so we see that we are um, about the one Kelvin. And so if we account for the collocation uncertainties of being uh, um, distant by three hours, up to three hours, then we see that we are within the, the requirement. In humidity, you see that the bias is uh, very small and the standard deviation is between 1 and 1.5 gram per kilogram uh, in the lower troposphere. Okay, uh, same concept as we've, uh, have, we've seen before. This is just a, a time series between September 18 and May 19 to show that the bias of the temperature this time at 600 hectopascal is stable and close to zero. The standard deviation is uh, close to, to 1 and relatively flat over time, and also the humidity uh, bias is also uh, flat and close to zero, and the standard deviation is relatively uh, uh, stable. So all these uh, results come from uh, routine validation reports, which are not yet public, but we intend to make them public relatively uh, shortly. If we have time, I can give you a, uh, a quick glimpse into these, uh, these reports. So what we have done recently, so it's, it's not near real time service anymore, but we have reprocessed the entire time series of uh, YAZI since January 2008 and compared it to uh, to SON. So this will be available in the climate data record, which could be interesting also for the your now casting studies, uh, working with, uh, with the historical data. And so these are statistics as we have seen before, the bias and the standard deviation as compared to zones with the same uh, collocation criteria and broken down in different seasons and we see that we have uh, relatively stable performance in all seasons for temperature and a variation in the absolute uh, humidity uh, precision uh, depending on the season. So winter time uh, it's drier, so the absolute uh, standard deviation is also drier. In, hum in summer we are moisture and therefore the absolute value is also uh, moisture. Okay, um, now I want to jump in uh, something you will see uh, later, so let's see if I can, can switch. Uh, the view. Uh, okay. Okay. Can I hope you can see the um, uh, weather monitoring uh, environment of the ESSL. And uh, what I'm what we're seeing here is the cape, the mixed layer cape at 50 uh, hectopascal, the first 50 uh, hectopascal from ECMWF uh, forecast. And I'm going to add on top of it the uh, YAZI um, cape. Uh, computed from the retrievals in each of the individual dots, which represent the, uh, the YAZI footprint. And so now if I click here, you will see on the uh, right-hand side the um, forecast profiles of humidity in thick green uh, line and of temperature in a thick red line. 
And the YESI are the thinner lines in green for humidity and in brown for um, temperature. And the bar here you're seeing is the uh, uncertainty estimates I introduced before. And so if we browse uh, along the area, interestingly, we see that we have vertical structures in the uh, retrieval profiles, and they may be different to the forecast, actually. And uh, broadly, we see that uh, the capes are in agreement uh, between the capes are represented here in orange between the forecast and, and the satellites. But if I go to this area, for instance, then we see that the satellites tend to see larger cape than the, uh, than the forecast. In other situations, in our studies with, uh, with ESSL, we have seen situations where uh, YESI was not seeing as high a cape as there was probably uh, according to the forecast, but also in situ observations for the reason that uh, Yana, uh, Yana mentioned uh, before. But see, we find interesting to provide complementary information to, uh, to forecast and be able to see a uh, vertical structure of humidity as here and hope that these uh, 3D information can be also useful uh, in qualitative terms to the, to the forecasters. Okay, so I'll jump back to the presentation and I think we're approaching the end uh, slowly. Okay. Uh, Okay, what we have seen and what you may find is a, is a profile that uh, gives the impression that we are super saturated. And in fact, what happened is we have decided not to, um, to trim the, the humidity uh, with a, a post uh, processing that would do some physical checks. And so if you account for the error bars, and actually uh, we are not uh, suggesting that it is oversaturated, but most likely it is just saturated. So at this stage, we have decided not to uh, trim the humidity profiles to make them in 100% relative uh, humidity uh, and to leave it this way, but that's something we are uh, discussing with the users how best to, uh, to leave that uh, information. In future, we want to provide a full profile of uncertainties that will give the users a feeling um, of uh, down to which level the profiles are most reliable and below which level they start to, uh, to be of uh, maybe lesser quality. Okay, and I think that will be um, the, the last few uh, slides, yep. We are also uh, monitoring the, uh, the lapse rate computed at, uh, in different ways, so from ground to uh, 1.5 kilometer in the boundary layer, from uh, uh, ground to 500 hectopascal or from 850 to 500 hectopascal. And this is monitored against uh, radio sounds. This is uh, really uh, just starting here at the moment to give us confidence of the quality of lapse rates that you could deduce from the profile or that we could pre-compute for, for you. Uh, but we need further interactions with users to find uh, more how this could be used uh, in a, a no-casting context. And um, Okay, this is the, the, the last slide. It's going to be a, a, a busy one, so I, I call for your attention. We're reaching the end now, landing very soon. Uh, I'm going to talk further about the quality indicator and more specifically its uh, significance. We validated uh, the profile themselves. I have shown some results of that. In what I'm going to show now, we're going to validate the quality indicator, so the uncertainty estimates, and in how they can be trusted and used by the, by the users. And as we are doing that, we are going to compute statistics of uh, retrievals between, um, um, of difference between retrievals and zones for different quality range. And the quality range are represented here. So here, uh, this is uncertainty estimate uh, about 0.735 uh, Kelvin. In the infrared sounding mode, so if we were uh, removing the utilization of, uh, of the microwave sounders on EPS, to be in more MTG IRS-like conditions. And to the right-hand side, this is the combined microwave and infrared. And you see that the yield of the best quality is slightly higher, with, uh, which is not a surprise because microwave helps in, uh, in the atmospheric sounding. So you see that the precision is actually of about uh, 0.75 Kelvin. So the uncertainty estimate is uh, meaningful in that sense. Now we're looking at the same statistics for quality indicator or uncertainty estimates um, of about one Kelvin. And here again, both for the uh, infrared only and the microwave infrared mode, we do have precision of about uh, one Kelvin. And here as well, the yield of this good quality class is higher 
uh, with the combined microwave infrared than with the infrared only, slightly higher. The next quality class would be between 1 and 1.5 uh, Kelvin. And here we see that the precision as assessed against sound is also of that order, so the uncertainty estimate is significant. And the yield in the microwave infrared is uh, uh, significantly larger than the infrared only, because clearly here we have uh, um, uh, cloudy pixels in, uh, in, uh, in the game, where the infrared only will be uh, less uh, operative. And the last two classes, uh, quality classes, um, then we also get the same statistics as the uncertainty estimates we're telling. And uh, the, um, the least uh, precise uh, quality class is mostly populated in the uh, infrared only, uh, which is not surprising because this is um, the infrared only mode will be extremely sensitive to clouds, while the microwave and infrared sounding is still able to make a, a reasonable job. Okay, so that brings me to the end. Um, the summary slide is a bit texty, but that's more for the for the record, so I'll go quickly over it. We've performed exhaustive intercomparisons to in situ and ground based reference measurements. Uh, this is both from campaigns and routine networks. Temperature is, a, is a better than one Kelvin in the in most of the troposphere, slightly larger next to the surface. Humidity precision uh, in the low troposphere typically range between one one point five uh, gram per kilogram, and that depends on the season and the actual moisture content. So we've evaluated also the total and partial water vapor columns and lapse rates. We are beginning in that. And we have to bear in mind that the, um, uh, that the fine scale structures cannot be resolved, but we do have vertical information at broader scales, which uh, um, should be also uh, useful to, uh, to, the, to the forecasters. Um, so we have, as bulk statistics, precise profiles in most, uh, in most uh, weather regimes. Uh, we need to carry on and evaluate uh, these products uh, more systematically in the extreme weather uh, situations. And uh, bear in mind that the IRS, which will operate in infrared only, will be more sensitive to clouds than EPS uh, YASI, which take advantage of the microwave and infrared uh, data. So what we want in this uh, dialogue and what I wanted to open with these uh, uh, validation results is to go on with growing the same experience as uh, forecasters have with the numerical forecast and uh, learn how to use these uh, satellite products in relation to severe weather and feedback to us uh, to evolve the services, the way we present the information, and, and so on. So we have a routine monitoring, which I haven't shown, but uh, could be made public uh, in, a, in a few months, of temperature and humidity uh, against storms. Um, then we are going to include also routinely the SUOMINET and UMINET ground-based GPS uh, uh, instruments for total column water vapor. We have plans also to have a routine monitoring with AMDA because we are seeing the clear potential there. And uh, overall, we need to raise the capability to evaluate the performance of the products in the boundary layer with better matchup and references because there the distance uh, in time of up to three hours is, uh, with sounds is detrimental. And so we are working in that uh, respect with the teams in Meteo France and University of Köln to try and see whether ground-based microwave radiometers network uh, could be useful in that respect. And that's part of a broader picture, an EU uh, initiative called uh, COST. And the last uh, message is the quality indicator. So as we have seen, we provide uncertainty estimates along with the, with the profiles and an indication about the cloud intensity. And they are both uh, relevant to the actual precision of the, of the product. And so they are available to the users so they can adjust the data selection uh, for their particular applications. And I think that's it. So I thank you very much for your attention.